Hello, my name is Alex Isles and in today's episode I'm going to be answering the question, what is a Viking? Welcome back. Now you might be asking yourself, Alex, that seems to be a pretty simple question. I know what a Viking is. And even today with the modern world we're in, you know, lots more education has been done around the Vikings. We no longer think they wore horned helmets or things like that. And we have a much more deep understanding of the Viking Age. But I still wanted to make this video because, you know what, when I'm going through online, often I'll get a lot of information about the Vikings and some of it is good information and some of it is pretty poor information. And I want to start off talking about adverts on Facebook. Now you might go, well Alex, this seems a wee bit of a derail, but I wanted to start off with that. Because when I'm scrolling through my Facebook, on occasionally I get DNA companies pop up. And these DNA companies, they promise me, and they say, you know, why don't you do a DNA test and find out what percentage Viking you are. Or sometimes there's another one that pops up and goes, discover how much percentage Finnish Viking or Swedish Viking or Norwegian Viking you are. And, you know, you could almost say that's a tiny bit better, and I'll explain why in a second. But there's these sort of things where people want to find out today how much Viking they are. And I find this quite a funny one, and we'll talk about the reasons why in a minute. But the reason why I find this funny is because Viking is actually a job description. It's actually a role rather than an ethnicity or a genetic group. A Viking is a pirate or a raider who would go off to fight. And so when people are saying, or these DNA companies, for instance, are selling the opportunity to find out how much Viking you are, it's not actually an accurate thing. It's like almost going away and doing a DNA test to find out how much of an accountant you are. Your accountant, if you are an accountant, that's your profession. It's not your genetic group or your ethnic group that you're a part of. So that's an interesting one in its own right. Now the reason why Vikings have become so popular is obviously because of pop culture, TV shows and things like that. And then you can see in the background I've got an image from uh, the Vikings Ragnarok series which is obviously going out at the minute and its predecessor Vikings as well was highly popular. The BBC did Last Kingdoms focused on Uhtred uh, of, of Northumbria, you know, as another series that they put out. And also even like Marvel has its own Space Viking 4 and for, you know, all of the four series at the moment in this year we've got 4 Love and Thunder coming out. So there's loads of pop culture about the Vikings and that makes it more and more popular. People want to connect to it because they see a form of either heroism or uh, masculinity, femininity or something about that that they find connecting with. They want to be a part of that culture and they see it as cool. They like some of the costumes even though if you've studied history at all and you see those costumes they are um, particularly horrendous <laughs> and I won't go into that today but uh, you could you can search in most uh, really authentic reenactment groups or history research or you know anyone who's done historical research on those topics can tell you that the, the costumes they're wearing are really quite poor. Now, all of that sort of stuff, or maybe the hairstyles and things like that, you know, even the popularity of certain hairstyles and beards have come off the back of Vikings. So there's another one there. You've also got connected to this as well, the resurgence of Norse paganism. And with that, many people want to connect back to a spirituality that they see um, connects with the cultural grouping they want to be a part of. So you see that people will connect to the Norse faith, to that sort of ancient form of paganism. And so even today, I was reading an article that suggests the second largest religious group in Iceland is actually Norse paganism. So it's an interesting one there to see how that connects in as well, how a religion that's dead is now being reimagined, re-brought back through the sagas, through what people know, and is now created a more sort of um, stable faith that people can to ascribe to. So there's another one interesting one there. But to what is an actual Viking itself? Well, there's a number of different ways of looking at this. To start off with, um, from an Anglo-Saxon point of view, the word wicking meant pirate or raider. So you've got the wickings and the fact that there was piracy. So it could be a descriptive of them, but it was put onto them by another ethnic group. Now, generally, 
The Vikings are Scandinavian, so from Norway, Sweden, Denmark, around that part of the world, and later on, obviously, as other settlements grew up in other areas, you got Vikings from other settlements as well, such as, for instance, the Hiberno-Norse, which is where the, the Scandinavians mixed with the Irish population. You would obviously, alongside that, have uh, English Vikings from the Danelaw. You would have Scottish Vi Vikings from Scotland as well, and then alongside that as well, Slavic Vikings, and they settled in other locations as well, such as Kiev, and then that would become one of the different ethnic groups that would eventually form the modern-day nation of Ukraine and also Russia. So you can see those sort of differences there. Another theory is they're named after a particular location where they came from. Now, this theory is a lot less popular today, and the suggestion is that there's a fjord near Oslo Fjord called Vik, and so it's possible that they were the people from Vik and they were the Vikings. So that's another possibility, but that's not as popular anymore. And instead, the idea of the idea of our uh, wicking is much more popular. Alongside this as well, from Old Icelandic, the word vikia means away from home. And so when you were away from home for a while, you went gone a Viking or gone as a, a way to do that. And also Vikinger also meant raider or pirate. So you can see all of those things coming together where you've got the fact that it's a piracy from the um, English, Scottish and Irish point of view uh, or the Anglo-Saxon, Scot, Pictish and uh, different Irish people's view in those days. Uh, then alongside that as well, you've also got the fact that it means away from home in Old Icelandic, and it can also mean raider or pirate within the Norse language, or warrior as well. So when we look at that, there's the clear evidence of a fighting element of what a Viking is, to be away from home, to go raiding, to go fighting, to go piracy from the recipient side, and then that builds up together. Another interesting thing is the analysis from Graves of both DNA and isotopes shows that, as I mentioned earlier on, the Vikings were not a homogenous ethnic group. They weren't all just Norwegian, Swedish and Danish, but we see that there were Irish Vikings. Genetic analysis of the settlers in Iceland shows that 50% of their DNA was Irish. So there's an interesting one as well, because there's a possibility that the Irish settled on Iceland and then were added to by later Norse settlers who then settled there as well. So you can see back then it wasn't just an ethnic structure that created the Vikings. The Vikings weren't just an ethnic group, but instead it was a lifestyle, an adventurous lifestyle that was adopted by numerous different ethnicities and cultures to go out under a new culture which was basically um, almost dictated by the Scandinavian groups by uh, and influenced by their religion and their culture and then resulted in the Viking Age as we understand it, which is a really interesting one to look at it today from a modern age. So I really hope you've enjoyed today's video on what is a Viking and it's been able to open up the topic and maybe teach you a little bit more about the Vikings as well. If you have enjoyed the video, please do like the video and share it with your friends. And if you would like to support me further, I do have a Patreon, which you can find in the description below, or a coffee if you'd just like to do a one-off payment. Again, no pressure there. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and look forward to seeing you in another video in the near future.